Law 12. Use selective honesty and generosity to disarm your victim. One sincere and honest move will cover over dozens of dishonest ones. Open-hearted gestures of honesty and generosity bring down the guard of even the most suspicious people. Once your selective honesty opens a hole in their armor, you can deceive and manipulate them at will. A timely gift, a Trojan horse, will serve the same purpose. Observance of the law. So this first story is a demonstration of how sincere and blunt honesty can end up in your benefit. This story was in the 1920s that centers around Al Capone, one of the most feared gangsters of the 1900s. And this gentleman named Count Victor Lustig, who was a con man, a very famous con man who was known for his knowledge of human psychology and understanding people and being able to trick people into getting what he wanted. He promised this gangster, a very dangerous gangster, that if he gave him $50,000, he could double it. Capone noted something different about this man, something about his character, something about his style. So, he gave him the 50000 He had 60 days to double it. All he did was put $50,000 in this deposit box, left it there for 60 days, came back to Capone after two months, returned. He said, I'm sorry Capone, I couldn't do it. I don't have your hundred thousand dollars, I couldn't double it. Just as about Capone was trying to figure out what am I do with this person who just wasted fifty thousand dollars of mine. Now Capone's rich, you know, fifty thousand dollars isn't a lot, but it's still enough to, you know, kill someone over. Last week pulls the money out of his pocket, puts it on the table, apologizes once more, wishes he could have doubled it for both their sake. Now Capone, he was confused, he wasn't expecting the money back. He said, I know you're a con man. I knew at the moment you walked in. I expected either $100,000 or nothing. But this, getting my money back, so that confused him. The con man apologized again. He picked up his hat about to leave. And then Capone yelled out, You're my God, you're honest. And on the spot, gave him $5,000 out of the 50000 now Lustig acted like this wasn't his plan all along, he, he basically seemed very surprised, very thankful, left quickly, and that was it. Interpretation. He made $5,000 for being honest, for not trying to con him. In fact, that's the way he manipulated him, by doing something no one else had done. It goes back to the last law. He did something no one else had done before, surprised and shocked this notorious gangster with sincerity and honesty. So the way Victor did this was by understanding the psychology of his prey, by understanding the psychology of Capone. Everybody knows in the, in the, in the face of a con man, of someone who is, who is superficially untrustworthy, their defenses go up. They get very suspicious, naturally. So to counteract this, last week used selective honesty to bring down the defenses of Capone. He used selective honesty by letting himself be caught in an act of true honesty. So, the act of true honesty by giving the money back. Now, there are always people like Capone in everybody's life. People who spend most of their life mistrusting the company around them. They're in the company of vultures, and in the company of wolves, people who, who are trying to take them down. So you walk around on edge most of the time, you walk around distrusting most people. So when someone like Lusty comes in and he exhibits true honesty, a true gesture of honesty, that makes Capone feel different. He feels like, wait a second, something's different. Now I will respond differently to how I usually respond. With Lustig, he got the impression that not everybody was had an angle and was out to rob him. And with that generosity, he was rewarded. Now the key was that this con caused a conflict of emotion, of honesty and dishonesty. And this conflict of emotion within Capone is when you can easily distract and deceive someone, as Lustig did. 
So the point is, do not shy away from practicing this law on the Capones of the world. It really will only, in this situation, really focus on the Capones of the world, the people who distrust the people around them, who are always, always looking out over their shoulder, second-guessing other people's intentions. That's when this can come into good practice. Keys to power. The essence of deception is distraction. Distracting the people you want to deceive gives you the time and space to do something they won't notice. An act of kindness, generosity, or honesty is often the most powerful form of distraction because it disarms other people's suspicions. Now the key to this working is you have to be authentic. You have to be genuine. Or you have to know how to fake being genuine or fake being authentic very well. So you have to be very self-aware to your own behavior and manipulate it based on how the other person is responding and reacting because if you're not authentic and genuine then people especially women who are a lot more percept can be a lot more perceptive than males will see past that and they will catch you out so if you're trying to purposely deceive someone in this in this situation then you need to be either really genuine and authentic or you need to learn how to fake it really well how do you do that you just have to study human behavior. You just have to study psychology. You have to want to learn and be observant every time you interact with someone. Observe the way they respond and react. Be the objective third person looking above everybody. Not subjectively judging them. Not placing your own, your own limitations and values and preconceived notions on them. But stepping back, stripping that all away and looking at it without any of that cloudiness, without any of that illusions, if that makes sense. But here's something you can do to kind of hack it for people you haven't met yet. Selective honesty is best employed on your first encounter with someone. We are all creatures of habit and our first impressions last a long time. If someone believes you were honest at the start of your relationship, it takes a lot to convince them otherwise. This gives you room to maneuver. So. They, everybody talks about how first impressions are important. Yes, they can be. They can be take a while to rid a first impression and change it. So use that to your advantage, and use selective honesty. Maybe not take. Maybe not do anything really risky the first time you meet someone, where they may question your authenticity, genuineness, or or, or honesty. Maybe postpone that. But a single act of honesty is often not enough. What is required is a reputation for honesty, built on a series of acts. But these can be quite inconsequential once its reputation is established. As with first impressions, it is hard to shake. So it's going to take more than one act of honesty to have that impression on someone. It's going to take time and you have to be patient. Honesty is one of the best ways to disarm the wary, but it is not the only one. Any kind of noble, apparently selfless act will serve. Perhaps the best such act, though, is one of generosity. What's an act of generosity? Everybody does it multiple times a year. Gifts. A gift brings out the child in us, instantly lowering our defenses. Although we often view other people's actions in the most cynical light, we rarely see the Machiavellian element of a gift, which quite often hides ulterior motives. Everybody likes to receive gifts. If you know the person well, especially, and you can find something unique that they will like, there's a very easy way to win somebody over. What happened 3,000 years ago when the ancient Greeks traveled across sea to capture the city of Helen? What happened? What did they do? They gave a gift. What was this gift? Everybody knows it. Everybody's seen it before. The giant Trojan horse built out of wood and metal. Everybody's seen the movies or whether it's been in a book. That was a gift. And that helped them recapture a city. They spent years and years trying to recapture this city with brute force, but with generosity hidden behind a, and, and manipulation hidden behind a gift, they were able to get what they want. One gift did more for the Greeks cause than 10 
years of fighting. Now imagine that just applying to your life when you're trying to convince someone, when you're trying to trying to get someone to your side, trying to make somebody like you. You try all this, try that, try that for so long. Maybe just get a try a gift. Maybe just try that. Maybe that'll work. If history has any truth to it. It just might work. Now Robert notes on the dangers of this, as I was saying before, the tactic must be practiced with caution. If people see through it, their disappointment, disappointed feelings of gratitude and warmth will become the most violent hatred and distrust. Unless you can make the gesture seem sincere and heartfelt, do not play with fire. Reversal. Now, when you already have a history of deceit behind you, no amount of honesty, generosity or kindness will fool people. In fact, it will only call attention to itself. Once people have come to see you as deceitful, to act honest all of a sudden is simply suspicious. Law 12. Use selective honesty and generosity to disarm your victim.